Hello everyone. Who's on here? <clears throat> I was thinking about having some music playing in the background because that's what I was doing all morning, but I don't know if my microphone is strong enough. Who's here? Oh, Mike, Enrico, Raul, Flyby. Hi, hi, Mars, Maddie. Hello. It's, what day is it? It's February 16th, 17th. Happy Valentine's Day. Um, you're all my Valentines. I'm just noticing these like these settings on the lives now. I'm not going to touch them. <laughs> I'm tempted. I'm tempted to play around. Um, yeah, I have to say I'm going into these things very like impromptu, not really planning anything. Um, and really, really like trying not to think about it beforehand. Normally I'm like a person who like, I'll be walking around, I'll be like doing things and I'm mulling over like all the projects in my head, kind of working them out while I'm doing other things. And I'm really, really, I don't know. It's just a, it's an experiment. I'm trying to like encapsulate it to the moment that I have to do it. Like just trusting that I don't need to prepare in the way that I think I do. I don't need to like plan. I don't need to figure it out, figure it out. That's like a very common theme with me. Like I need to figure this out. And I'm trying to drop that and just be like, I don't need to do anything. There's nothing to do. There's nothing to be. Just show up. Just put your butt in the chair. Just show up, just talk, just be yourself. So. Uh, my day, my day's going well, um, because of like <laughs> the theme of today, I'm trying to like really adopt that, meaning that like a few things have come up for me lately around like my schedule and my routine and all the things to get done. And, uh, I just find myself being incredibly busy. I find myself being incredibly busy, okay? But it's all relative, right? It's all like based on what I think I'm capable of, how I think like, how much time I think I need to dedicate to something, how much I think I need to prepare for something, all of that, and like how much energy I need. Um, and I was realizing that like, I think I need a lot of time to wind down in the evening like I'm, <laughs> I was like, oh, I spend like three hours winding down in the evening and then I go to bed and I like really think that that is necessary. Like it's not a like, I want to do this. Literally in my head, it's like, I need to do this. So there's three hours that I'm like, that I could be doing something else. And again, it's like a perspective shift. Like I think work is work and that's gonna drain me. And like winding down is winding down and that's gonna like restore me. And um, so I'm just trying to kind of flip things in my head and be like, maybe I have more energy than I think I do. First of all, maybe I don't need so much rest time that I think I do. Like, I think that came out of a place of more, like, emotional exhaustion than um, physical exhaustion. So, so yeah, I'm kind of excited about that. I'm like, oh, like, maybe there's so much more that I, like, that I have within me. <laughs> um, yeah, and maybe, like, all of life can be more... Um, not draining, like I can see it not as like work, I can just see it as like a part of life that actually like gives me energy as opposed to like depletes me. So yeah, there's just, I'm just like paying attention to how I spend my time and 
And from my perspective, there's like a lot of ramping up and ramping down that I seem to be doing. And I just kind of want to do away with that. Like people are very precious of their like zones. Um, I remember reading how like Lena Dunham would just like write wherever she happened to be. It was like in bed, it was on a flight, it was like and if you have to do it, you have to do it. Um, and that's very different from the perspective of like, no, this is my quiet, like this is my writing time and I sit at my desk because this is where I do my writing and then I do this, 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 this. Like we've all gotten kind of crazy with the like morning routines and all of that. And the truth is like I would throw out my morning routine if something else took precedent. I would. I would throw it out. Because it's supposed to be serving you, not hindering you. Like, if my winding down rest time is getting in the way of me actually doing the things that I want to do, and that's why I'm winding down, it makes no sense. It makes no sense. These things we do to like, that we think is like, no, it's so I can be at my best. Like, maybe it is so I can be at my best, but there's like a very fine line to like, the thing that makes you at your best, like now is the thing that's like limiting you and prohibiting you and like getting in the way, just getting in the way. I'm not saying I'm gonna like totally reject it, but it would be like, it would be nice if I didn't need it. You know, if it was a choice, if it was a legitimate choice. <laughs> you guys are so funny. Janessa's baddies, unite! Unite! Super Bowl day. I made a bet on Super Bowl day and I should have, I got cocky. I made a bet, I was like, okay, the Chiefs are gonna win because they always win and Taylor always wins. But then I was like, no, they're gonna, I'd like place one of those bets that it's like, they're gonna win by this amount of points. I shouldn't have done that. And my Valentine's Day was really nice. Um, I kind of, I didn't realize it was Valentine's till I woke up that day and I was like, oh, it's always Valentine's Day. Um, but I got chocolates and I got flowers. And I got socks, so I was happy. Now here's the one and only Janessa. Should make, I should make an intro video for the lives. I need an MC. I need an MC. I need an introduction. Oh, introductions are so cringe. You made pizza and cookies for yourself. Oh, fatal framer, I love that. What kind of cookies? I love that. You tried an intro? Maybe I'll scroll back. It's been such a good week. I'm just like, I'm so happy in my life right now. <sighs> yeah, I just feel like very creative and I feel like I'm pushing myself just enough, like and I'm always pushing myself a little bit more. And um, like I'm catching all the things I need to catch, like all the, all the kind of like stupid thoughts that I might have let get in the way earlier. I'm catching them. And, um, and I just feel excited. Like excited for what's happening right now. And I'm kind of like, okay, if I just stay on this right now and I let it build momentum, like if I stay with myself, you know, don't get too like, just stay with this little girl because she's doing great and I let it build, what's gonna happen? 
<laughs> I look like an old person. Oh. Chocolate chips. Of course, chocolate chips. Of course. Semi-sweet, dark, milk. I'm very against the milk chocolate in a cookie. I think it's too sweet. And I am very pro, like, you know, coarse sea salt on a cookie. Milk chocolate. My sister would like you. That's what she prefers. I mean, I just think, you know, you have so much fat content in a cookie. You need to like, Um, you know, you need to balance that thing. I really like baking. I'm, I'm a little bit of like a, if I see someone else baking in a kitchen, I like, I'm the person who like needs to step in because I just assume that they're going to do it wrong. <laughs> it's so annoying. Like, I'm like, you know, you need to like refrigerate your cookies first before you bake them because they'll turn out better. Hmm. Thank you. Reese's big cup. In a cookie? What are we talking about? In a cookie? I need to I need to brush up on my Spanish. Um cooking. I like cooking too. I haven't been doing it so much. Hello, MAGA Art. Hi. Hi. Okay, I think I'm gonna get to uh to today's topic. And we'll see how this goes. Um, again, like all morning, I was trying not to think about it, but I was thinking about this and all week, like I've kind of been thinking about it. Um, but I want to present something to you, just like a hypothesis, which is you think like, you think you are someone. <laughs> Like really, you, you like, if you just sit with yourself, you're like, there's a feeling of being you. There's a you-ness that's like there, present, no matter what you're doing, no matter who you're talking to. And it might kind of like shift and glide, but like you're very, it's just very present. It's like the most present thing that actually ever, ever is, is like this sense of like, that's me, that's me. I'm right here, I'm here. It's not someone else. It's me. And some people might say that like what that is, whatever. Some people might say like, oh, you're just born with that. And you might be, okay, you might be. You might be like, you know, you come in, you're like a little baby, you're like and it's you. And like having been around kids, I definitely would say that there is something to that. But I also want to suggest that it's not like it's not this inherent thing necessarily. There might be a kind of starting off point, but then again, like, is there ever like a starting point? Is there like a, a pistol and like, and we're off and like, it's from nothing, there's something. And physics would say, no, that's not true. So, okay, there's no starting off point. And like, you become aware whenever you become aware, you become like a person whenever you become a person. And then like all these things happen to us and we have, events and people and culture and society and we have parents and sisters and friends and then we have like a physical body that does whatever it does and and all these influences and then from that we gather like all these experiences and lessons and memories and somewhere like in that whole mess of things that we put into the suitcase we're like that's that's me I guess all of these things, all of these combining factor factors, like nature versus nurture. Okay, but the memory bit, the memory bit, the experience bit, like all these things happened to me and that influenced who you see today. Yeah, so first of all, we know how memory is subjective, like incredibly unreliable. They won't use it in a court of law like 
a first person account of something that happened isn't isn't reliable even like and we're we're persuaded by it we're often like persuaded by like the emotion behind it it's very persuasive but like we know it's not exactly reliable and if you think about your own memories like you know your memories aren't really reliable you know that it's kind of hazy and you know that it kind of shifts and like I've heard that a memory is like a Xerox copy and every time you remember it gets photocopied so every time you remember it becomes like a copy of 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 a cop of a cop <laughs> and and yet like these are the defining moments of us of like our, our lives of like our complete understanding of existence these copies of copies that's what we have to go off and I would say like it's not actually the memories themselves. It's not actually the events themselves. It's not. It's what you made the events mean. It's what you made the memories mean. And this is why if you change the meaning, you change the memory. Like any event, if I just like think of my morning and I, let's say I go like, my morning was really stressful. I'm gonna be kind of like kindergarten <laughs> basic in some ways because I just think like some things are really really common sense and yet we miss like how I don't want to say like magical or mystical but it is like it's friggin crazy what actually happens and how it influences everything and it is kind of mystical so anyway I'm just gonna say like you have a morning and if I were to take the perspective that my morning was really stressful my morning was so stressful. And now I'm gonna look back from that vantage point, right? Having declared what the morning was. I'm gonna look back from there, right? And I'm gonna see the events that happened in a completely different way. I'm gonna be searching for the stressful points. I'm gonna be trying to remember like the events that felt a little like more twingy than others, I'm gonna be thinking about like whatever, and also whatever stress means to me, because I have a perspective on what the definition of stress is and what my relationship to stress is and how I relate to stress, okay? So it's gonna shape my morning, like just my morning, a very ordinary morning, very, very ordinary, but suddenly it's gonna become something from that place. And at the exact same time, the exact same morning, I can say I had such a chill, a chill, relaxed morning. And from there, I can look at it and, I, and I'm and i gonna like, again, draw up all these things proving my point because like, I wanna prove myself right. I wanna, I wanna give myself that person, like I wanna give myself that world that, oh, that's the game we're playing with our morning. That's like, that's what we're creating out of our morning. Okay, let me give that to you. So then, oh, it was super chill. And I think of like, yeah, you know, like the nice hot shower. And I think of like listening to Lizzie McAlpine. And I think of, you know, like maybe just certain interactions or like just the feeling of like lying in bed or like the f w opening my windows and like the light coming in and I can feed this as much as I want. Like I can stay in this as much as I want and and scope for evidence as much as I want until it really does become my reality that I had the best morning. I had such a beautiful, beautiful morning and I can stay there. And then also from that place, okay, wow, I had such a good morning. Now I'm gonna have an expectation and an assumption about what having a wonderful morning means going forward. You know, if I have a stressful morning, I will have, I will be like, oh, okay, I took this hit this morning. Like I'm wounded, I'm wounded. And now I have to go into battle the rest of my day. Like this is why morning routines are a thing, by the way, it's a perspective thing. People think like I conquered the morning. Therefore, <laughs> it's that you think like you didn't conquer the morning. Someone's conquering the morning is someone else's like super chill, like lazy morning. It's, it's like you gave that to yourself. 
you can give that to yourself no matter what happened. You can just be like, I conquered the morning. I got out of bed. I won. And then from that place being like, I'm victorious or whatever it is. I've never actually read, um, what is it? Cal Newport or whatever. I've never read that. Um, it's perspective about like who you are because you think like, oh, I checked off all my to-do list. I'm amazing. Again, you can just give that to yourself automatically, but because you did all the things that you think, you think you have to do to be a good, amazing person, oh, now you can go into your day with this perspective that like you've already won. But you can decide that you've already won at any moment in time. It's just a choice. It's all choice. Everything is just a choice. And I suspect for myself, again, thinking about this, this week, this morning, trying not to think about it, because I have a perspective about like what that might mean if I think about it and if I don't. Chances are you have made very few choices about where you choose to place yourself and the perspective you choose to have, you choose to have it. It's not there inherently. Most of the time, like we're living our life and we just think things are inherently there. We just think that's the way it is. Like I'm so used to this at this point, but I remember like first being introduced to this thought that like, oh, I have a choice. I've, I've really, really been thinking that things are a certain way, that they're just that, that it's just that way, that this is just truth, this is just absolute. It just really, really is. And you know, like I fight against it and I try to reason with it and I try to like logic my mind out of it, but it's so real to me, it's so present to me and it's such a part of my like internal makeup that I don't recognize that all of that effort of like, trying to work through it is playing the game of that being real. Like I'm choosing the game and I keep playing that game. And even if I win against it, I am still choosing to live in that particular game. I'm choosing to live in the game where like, I'm an overthinker or something. Oh, I'm a really like emotional, sensitive, overthinking person. So this is like, oh, I, that talk of like, I am like, this is a meanness. Like, okay, I just like, I go through the world and I just have this sense of who I am. And for a long time, that sense of who I am, that was like, you know, water to the fish was like, right, okay, I'm kind of this like, I don't want to tell on myself a little bit, but I will like, it was a bit like, I'm like a bit of a, like an odd duck. I don't really fit in, I don't really belong. I'm always, I always kind of feel like I'm a bit behind. I'm always like trying to catch up to whoever it is that I think is more impressive, is more intelligent, is more beautiful. I'm kind of always like trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. And like, then there's this other part of me that's like, very anxious and very divided in myself and I'm very sensitive but I'm also not like I'm sensitive at the wrong times but I'm also like not that girl in the movies who like cries at a stranger's funeral or something like I have this whole world of who I am and I really think this is life this is me and this is life and the game is for me to somehow win at life being this, with this, with these, like, with this script, with these rules, with this perspective. And I don't even see that I'm having this perspective. It's just what it is. It's what it is. And for me to win, I have to conquer over the perspective. I have to like, okay, I'm a really shy person. So I have to conquer my shyness and I have to constantly overcome that. And I have to like, Okay, I have to, I have to, this is why I think like I got used to just like decompressing. Okay, I have to like calm myself and center myself because I'm this like very nervous person. And so like when I go out and I go out of my comfort zone and I'm like with people, it's like, it's like I'm slaying dragons and it takes a lot out of me and then I need to like come back and decompress so I can do it again the next day. 
and it goes on and on and on and for me to win like it's just gonna take a lot of work because who I am my perspective of who I am and my sense of who I am is like this person that that isn't like properly equipped for life that like life is like this like life is like hard life is life life is demanding and life is like in a way designed for people that aren't like me that everyone else has the stuff and I don't and I'm trying to catch up and I'm trying to figure it out right and I'm really thinking that that's what life is I'm really really believing in that game and the game is like if you think of this as a video game you guys are gamers okay you think of this as a video game like life is a video game okay and there's you can like take it to the level where it's like right like that there's one game that there's one game and you're playing and that's the game you're this person you're assigned like an avatar or whatever and you're playing as that person you have to overcome that person but the game it's a really good game guys it's a really it's really 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 smart okay the game is not to play and like control the person the game is to control the perspective the game is to control the games. You have that option. What if that's installed into the game, but no one tells you, no one tells you off the bat or people do, but you don't get it because you're so like caught up in trying to like get this player over there. But they're like, yeah, you know, there's like, <laughs> like there's other dimensions to this game, right? And you can actually like change the game at any moment if you want. But the game is the perspective. It's not moving the character forwards and back. It's not slashing through jungles. It's not shooting at enemies. It's the perspective. You get to choose what you look at at any moment. You get to choose what everything means, what everything means, what everything is at any moment. And when you do that, it completely changes the game. It changes the character and it changes the game. And that's what you get to do. And that goes as far back as you want. It's like, it's a really, 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 really smart game. And I would bet that there are things that you are taking for granted that just are like, I, I, I don't know if, I don't know if there's an end to this, but there's just assumptions, there's perspectives about like what everything means and what it is. And you're not realizing that like you get to choose. You get to choose. Do you want it to be this? Do you want it to mean this? If you don't, you get to choose something else. You get to choose that it means something else. You get to look at it differently and you get to look at different things. And that like I amness, you get to choose that. It can change. You're not actually real. <laughs> like, it's further back. You're not actually real. You're just a perspective. That's the only difference between you and someone else. That's the only difference, really, is the way that you assemble all the data points, is what you make all the data points mean. That's really what differentiates you from someone else. And that's why they're living that life and you're living this one. That's really what it is. The law of like detachment is really interesting and I've struggled with this a little bit because yeah, I struggled with this. <laughs> oh gosh, like I used to be so caught in caring about certain things like and that caring was good. That caring was like, and I mean, I don't get that idea from nowhere. Like we like people who are passionate. We like people who care, who care. Who like, like if you watch a television show, you know, we sympathize with the guy who like, whatever, if you're watching like a law show, you know, and there's like the cold lawyer and like the hot lawyer, right? Like the, the lawyer who like cares, who like feels for people, right? And we're like, right, I, I want to be a person who cares. And I, I was very much like, I'm a person who cares because I really, really felt like that was, it was so important to care. It was so important to care. Um, and it made me a good person and I don't know it made the things um, It's somehow like 
honored the things I cared about. Like if I didn't do that, I would be letting them down. But what I didn't see was that like I was, I was putting things on a pedestal over me and I was making these things like really, really important. And maybe I'm just talking specifically about like things that I wanted to, that I like wanted for myself. It was like, this is really important. And I am somewhere in relation to that thing. Um, and for that thing to stay important, it needs to stay like a certain magnitude. You know what I mean? Like if that mountain is really tall, in a way, I have to stay way back here where the mountain is tall. I can't start climbing the mountain because then it gets shorter. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Until like the more I climb this mountain, the more it just becomes ground underneath my feet. My, my scaling it flattens it out. And now it's not as important. And now I've lost that mountain that I thought that I like really wanted to be so important that I was like trying to keep up there as some kind of ideal. The minute I actually like achieve it, it's gone. And now I don't have that anymore. And like, if you take this with money, it's like if you hold money or love or like rom romance or anything, if you take it as this like all important thing in a way, depending on like how you view yourself, in a way you like keeping, putting importance onto it and like value and significance and like all of this, in a way you're keeping it away from you. You can be like, it depends on how your self concept is, but you can be keeping it away from you because you're like, I need this thing to stay a beautiful, shining, gleaming star in the sky. Like I need a hero. I need an ideal, I need a dream. I need to have that. I need to have this thing that is bigger than me because it, it just makes me feel right in the world. That's just how it is. Like I am small, this thing is big and I need it to be like that for some reason. Um, and that's fine. Again, don't make it mean anything but from my perspective, like it was very painful. It was like super, super painful. And I had people who were like, you care too much. And I didn't understand what they, like I literally did not understand what they were saying. To me, it was like blasphemous. It was like, I care just the right amount. <laughs> you don't care enough. This thing is worth, like we need to care about this thing. We need to care about this thing. No, I'm not saying again, like, don't care about the thing, but if it like, if it, if it disables you, if it's this thing that you just keep as like some lofty goal, what do you, I don't know. You have an idol. There you go. You have an idol. There's like an expression, kill the Buddha, right? And I'm just going to say that to like any ideal, any idol is like at a certain point along the journey, you kill the thing that you aspired to. You have to, like that's the step. You kill it because you see that you were the one who gave it its position. You were the one who gave it its significance. Nothing is significant. Nothing is important. A cup of coffee and a car are the same value. Nothing means anything. It's the same value, like intrinsically but we give it meaning. And from that place, like we make things difficult to get and easy to get and worth getting and not worth getting and maybe worth avoiding and not worth avoiding and all of these things. And you get to choose. There's like so many choices that you get to make. And so if you find yourself like stuck in a certain perspective, like in a certain place and you're like, well, this is just like, this is life. This is my life. Like, I guess I would just encourage you all to like really look at how many choices have you actually made for how you choose, like for how you choose to see the world, to see yourself. Are you actually making, are you actually thinking for yourself? Are you actually thinking for yourself? 
and not just in terms of like from the vantage point that you've been given but are you choosing the vantage point you know what i mean and if you're not if you're not it could just be because you're scared because you're scared because other people see things a certain way or they've convinced you that they see things a certain way they they've convinced you and you really think oh my god if i if i dare to look at this a different way if i dare to look at myself a different way if i dare to look at this thing a different way um like i'm just going to screw everything up I'm gonna hurt people or I'm going to miss out on certain experiences or things or um, I'm not gonna be who they expect me to be. I'm not gonna show up as like a good son, daughter, friend. Like there's, I, I just think there's a lot of fear behind why we stay in certain holding patterns. It's just fear. It's just like, I can't go out there. I, I don't know how to play that game. I don't know what that is. I, I know what this is. I know what this is and it's hard, but like, I, I'm not ready to play a different game. I don't know what that would even look like or be. And, and I would somehow be like betraying everything that I've worked so hard to accomplish in this game. You know, don't make me switch. I don't want to. <laughs> Even if it's a better game, I don't want to. Like, I've gotten really good at this one. Isn't this, like, what I'm supposed to be doing? I don't, like, I don't want to lose. I thought of this this past week in terms of, like, my own life. That, like, if I surrender certain perspectives and points of view and, like, the game, if I give up the game, if I surrender... And I just like abandon it. I'm like, you know what? This isn't true anymore. For me, at least, this is how it occurs for me. I lose. This game I've been playing, I lose. I gave up. I lost. If you quit, you lose. Like really think of this as like, <laughs> like a video game. If I just like stop playing the game, I lost. I don't ever get, I don't, I don't, I, I lost the game. I just abandoned it. And, um, you know, and then like, you can even be like, I abandoned her because we shift, like, we shift this, we shift identities. I lost her. Like she had a game going and I chose like, well, I don't, I don't want to do that anymore. Sorry. I don't like your game anymore. I don't like it. Who you, whoever you think you are. That like identity you've built for yourself and you've solidified and like the way that you choose to look at your past and like your relationships and like your issues and your problems. I'm over it. I'm going to go over here and I'm just going to like be someone completely different and I'm just going to let that die over there. I really don't care because, so how can you do that? Because <laughs> you're like, there's, there's someone back here. If you're a video game, you're not like the friggin' avatar. You're not. And that's also why, like, if the avatar gets, like, a super cool sword or whatever, the player, like, it's fun, but you're not, like, I need this, like, you know, you can pick up another, any, at any, like, you know it's a game. You're not, like, I, the player isn't, like, I have value. I mean, <laughs> because my character in this game has a sword. You know it's, like, a little little pieces of data in a system you know it's not really a sword you know that you the player don't have it you know that you know that you don't have it you can never have it you can never reach into the screen and have that thing and your character can be like super hot and really good looking and really articulate and really funny and really like nah, nah. But like you, the player, like you know you don't have that. You can never have it. And so letting this character like 
you know what? I don't want to play this game anymore. I'm going to pick up like a new... I'm going to be someone else now. You can do that because like what's more important? That you have a good time playing? Or that like you have to play this game? Why? You're the, you're the player. You don't have to... Like that's the game is to realize that there's infinite games. And so how can you have the most fun? What if that's all it is? Just like, I want to have fun. I just want to have fun. I just want to experience as much as I can experience. I just want to go wherever my interest takes me, wherever my excitement takes me. I just want to explore. I just want to have fun. I just want to be a kid. I just want to like see what's possible, see what's out there. And I'm not going to make meaning out of it because it's all a game, but it's like, but it's fun. And that's all it is. And so the fear of like, but it is this way, that's fine. Like I was thinking about this with like my dog, you know, she doesn't like to go for walks, especially in the winter. And we do this like this thing where <laughs> I put my leash, I put the leash on her and I open the door. I have to open the door first. I don't know why we do it this way. And then she stands at the top of the steps and she looks outside and she like shakes in like anticipation of it right and I'm like mm -hmm, we're gonna go we're gonna go we're gonna go outside and it like lasts too long like five minutes whatever it's not too long but it's and then she's outside and she's fine now like I'm sure you've heard that before and most people would say like take the leap and they think that the leap is like some physical action and they think that like it's the doing out here that matters <laughs> but again it's not actually like that's how cool this game is is that it's your perspective it's what you choose things mean that's what you get to leap into that's what you like that's the thing that you'd get to decide like this is death or this is life like this is going to be a wonderful day or this is going to be the worst day of my life and you get to leap into that and like it might be like but it's but what if i'm wrong what if i'm wrong Again, like go at the door and find out and it might take some adjustments but that's okay that's okay have fun with that too like just as often as possible can you be having fun can you be having fun like and don't belittle like having fun again everything is like meaningless but why wouldn't you want to be having fun all the time why wouldn't you want to be like interested and excited all the time why wouldn't you why wouldn't you choose that? If, if that's like on the table, that's at the buffet, you can feel good all the time and it has nothing to do with outside circumstances. You can just be having fun all the time and feeling great all the time and feeling loving all the time. Like, hey, do you, do you want this? Or, oh, over here, we also have this like really special dish that <laughs> it's really special. It's like, it's for people who are like really discerning and um, they're very smart, like smart people choose this dish. They really like this dish. And this this dish, it's like very salty and um, it tastes like guilt and shame and like you're never quite measuring up to your parents' expectations, um, you know. And like this dish, this dish over here, yeah, it means that like you have to work everything out in your mind like 15 times. Um, yeah, so you can you can put that on your plate if you want. It's a really interesting, specific dish. And it's there for you, you know? And again, like, only the most discerning people choose this dish. Like, if you look around you, a lot of people are enjoying what this dish, you know? And so if you want to be like them, maybe you should have that. But but yeah, there's also, like, this dish over here that that feels like pure love all the time. Not a lot of people choose that. You know, they don't think it's challenging enough they don't they don't think it's what eating a meal should feel like yeah they they don't consider it like filling enough they like to feel really heavy after a meal. <laughs> I'm going so crazy with this metaphor but that's what it is and I know for me um a lesson that I'm I'm going through is like trusting feeling good is allowing myself to feel good. I know that sounds like bananas bonkers, but no one told me that, that like, that it was good to feel good. If anything, I think I had like my wires crossed 
And I think, like, a therapist told me this at some point, and I was like, hmm. Um, <laughs> I think I had wires crossed where it was like feeling bad was good. Feeling bad was good. Feeling bad, again, if I have the perspective that, like, I'm bad, I'm bad. I'm shy, and I'm scared, and I overthink, and I don't know how to love right, and I don't know how to live right. So, like, my instincts and what makes me feel good is wrong. Mm-mm-mm. Anything that makes me feel good, anything that I like, anything that I'm interested in, anything that I'm passionate about, any people I like, anything I want to do, mm-mm, I'm wrong. So, like, all of that stuff, wrong, wrong, wrong. So, if I feel scared out of my depths, um, I'm probably on the right path. If I feel bad and ashamed and freaked out, I'm probably exactly where I need to be. Good. Life is challenging me. I need challenge because I am a weak little piece of you know what, and I need to toughen up and get on the page that everyone else is on, that somehow like I missed, I missed like the whole class for that. So I just have to catch up for the rest of time because I didn't get the proper training that everyone else got. And that's what life is going to be for me. And it's going to be really hard, but you know what? Like, whoa, I'm going to feel so validated at the end of it because like everyone else had all these things that I didn't have. They, they had the proper training. I didn't have it. And I still succeeded. Isn't that amazing? Aren't I an amazing human being? Wow. I worked so hard. And now what I'm doing is it's like, oh, this feels good. Okay, trust that. Okay, more of that, please. Oh, we feel good about ourselves? Okay, more of that. More of that. We're gonna, we're gonna add that. Oh, this makes me excited? Okay, that means that it's right for us. That means it's right for me. Oh, this makes me feel just like calm or warm or glowy or any like any positive feeling. I'm like, okay, that I'm going to keep pressing that button as opposed to the other buttons. And um, for me, it's been kind of scary. Like that's all that's all I can really like explain or express about it is. Um, yeah, it, it feels a bit like we're loud, we're loud. Um, and I know I'm not the only person who experiences this, but yeah, you like life doesn't have to be hard. Maybe it's not even designed to be hard and you just... Like you inherited that and you've been thinking that's how it is and it's not. You know, like maybe you've experienced enough, enough of that and you don't have to, do, you don't have to do it anymore. Maybe you've learned enough life lessons. Maybe you're good. Maybe you'll learn more lessons now with it being easy. Maybe that's like the bigger lesson is not to like how to be, is not how to be tough, not how to like face your fears. Maybe it's how to like trust trust goodness trust yourself trust that good things can happen to you trust that good people can come into your life trust that you deserve it like how good can you let it be how how happy can you let yourself be how abundant and like fulfilled and just like at peace can you let yourself and maybe that takes way more courage maybe that takes way more and again maybe it takes nothing and again like you got to choose the game it doesn't have to be a demanding game unless you want that So, where's everyone at? If 
Russian language. I wish I could speak Russian. Change, I'm just gonna be like a stickler and I'm gonna say like change can be a scary thing. But also like, you know those times when, um, when you really want change, when you're just like, come on, like give me some variety. You can take that point of view too. Like, I am ready for change. I'm ready to like completely forget everything I've known. And just like, like give me a whole mess of things that I've never experienced before. <laughs> Your jacket, where can I get one of those chairs? It's um, it's like a wicker deck chair. So, go crazy. Ooh, different languages. Which languages? Hi. Eric. Karuda. 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 My address. Russian. I'd love to. I'd love to learn Russian. I would love to learn Russian and then read Dostoevsky in Russian. In the original Russian. Oh, oh. That's a good goal. Mm. That's okay. That you didn't become a, a Cobra helicopter pilot. I wonder what that is. That's okay. Maybe it's okay if you let fear stop you, you know? <laughs> That's just one, like it's just an experience to have that you wouldn't have if you had just done it. Like I know that's a weird thing, but like what if regret is its own experience and it's valuable? And what if because like we regret some things and we experience like, oh, you know, I didn't always do what I wanted to do Maybe something else presents itself. And because of that experience, we're like, I'm not going to do that with this thing. I'm not going to let fear stop me with this thing because I went through that, that experience. Like just accept everything, incorporate everything. Just like give yourself the benefit of the doubt for everything. Ooh, yes. I was trying to learn Korean for a while, but um, how are you learning languages? I think like uh, immersion is the best way to go. Actually being able to like have conversations with people. Yeah, the road not taken isn't, yeah. <laughs> it's just a road you didn't take. You can decide that the road you're on, like this takes courage too, by the way, to decide that your choices are right. And just to like, I'm sticking with you, baby. <laughs> Sometimes that's the hardest thing to do is just to stick with yourself. Do I like K-pop? Yeah, I love K-pop. Um, I also really like K-drama. Wow, that's great, Eric. German. Why German? Okay, you're just gonna learn all the languages. Okay, I expect from now on that you'll only write your uh, your chat messages in these languages. What the fuck is this line? 
No, it's alive. Welcome. No, I haven't watched Happy Gilmore. <gasps> I have to tell you guys something. Um, the dinosaur died this morning. I was cleaning my room and it like, it smashed. So I have to decide whether I want to try to salvage him and glue him back together or, you know, maybe it's time. I did have this like inkling when it happened. I was like, good. <laughs> That's super dark, but like, you know, burn it down. Um, let things die. Let things die. I don't know. There's like, there's release. There's like, it feels good. Like, yeah, let things burn. I don't know. There's like some like Kali energy in that. I could glow. I don't know. There's just this like, I want to rethink everything. Not the dinosaur. He's, he's, he smashed. He's actually not that bad, but that was my first inkling as I was like, let it go. You can fix him? Okay, I'll nail him to you. Do you want him? Okay, you go to your appointment, love. You go to your appointment. Don't be late. I know. Uh, okay. I'm not ignoring you, but I'm not going to answer all your questions. Okay. Is there anything else? No, I did <laughs> I didn't. It's just, I would never. That w I'm not that person. I am not that person. I would never. But I am, I did used to be the kind of person that like if I broke anything, I would be like, oh, what's wrong with me? Um, I can't have nice things. And now I'm like, oh, whatever. It's just a lamp. Okay. You asked me something. My cat did it. Can I come on tomorrow? Um, probably not. We'll see. You were like that? Yeah, it's so like, I don't know. That's one of the things I'm having to like deprogram myself around is like things are just things. Like they're things, like have less, give less importance to like material stuff it's just a thing and it doesn't mean anything about you like i guess i had this idea of like i'm someone I'm like oh i i take such good care of everything around oh. and that like if if like something went wrong in my like in my care i definitely had that around my body <laughs> Okay, um, fly to you. Ask me something then, but I'm not gonna answer everything, but ask me something then. Yeah. Okay. Okay, guys. I should go. Because I have stuff to do. <laughs> do you want me to hate you? Uh...
thank you guys. Um, I love you so much. And I also, like, I know I say this all the time. But you guys really are just, like, just incredible human beings. And I'm, I'm so, I'm so grateful. How did this even happen? How did you guys find me? This is just really, really lovely. And I'm really lucky. And, uh. I'm, I'm just so lucky and I hope you guys like have such a wonderful week and a wonderful day and um, like I don't know thank you <laughs> I didn't make the <sighs> okay look he like broke his leg and broke his tail so like he's alive all right I didn't extinct that I didn't extinct Brian okay Brian the dinosaur He's not extinct, he's just in the hospital. But I'm like, you know what, maybe he needs to like move on to other pastures because I don't even use him as a lamp. He's just like this thing that takes up space on my dresser and I need that space for all my skincare. So like, you know, <laughs> so I'm sorry, Brian, but like, yeah, humans inherited the earth. Dr. Enrico. Okay, doctor. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I am sick. I'm gonna go. I'm sorry. I know, I know. It hurts, but I'm gonna go. Okay. I love you so much. I love you, I love you, I love you. And you're single too. Wow, we have so much in common. And uh, <laughs> yeah, have a beautiful day and I'll see you guys next week. Okay, bye.